with her with the Jaffe, uh, Mr. John Stick. Okay, uh, wait a moment. Uh, give me some set, uh, give me a second because uh, David provided lots lots of information to share with our, our audience. And uh, maybe not a second, we have we have we have to have one minute. Uh, because I have provided, uh, also David provided the English version of all what I'm talking uh, later, and so please review the note for quality uh, control. So uh, David has mentioned our next guest, Mr. John Stitch. That is, he has been Dallas Bay Light. Yesterday morning, he has been to Dallas Bay Light. Yesterday morning, he has been to Dallas Bay Light. Yesterday morning, he has been to Dallas Bay Light. Yesterday morning, he has been to Dallas Bay Light. Yesterday morning, he has been to Dallas Bay Light. 那呃，学长提到就是说，呃，当当学长从德州仪器永和南区的工厂调呃调到这个负责 DI 市场行销的德云台湾分公司的时候，也展开了一个学长人生的新篇章。所以各位可以呃意识得到，第一位贵宾呃来自他的大学时代，那第二位贵宾来自学长进入职场的时代。那他也提到，那个 John s t i c h 先生呢，呃，他是学长在进入职场的时候的导师，主管给他的第一个震撼课是 Dress for Success。So you mentioned that you 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 gave her， 呃、uh, ，you you you gave gave him a book。呃，他说这本书里面从业务人员要如何穿着、如何搭配、打什么颜色的领带，要剪好指甲，才才敢跟客人握手。要擦亮皮鞋，才给坐下，露出鞋子跟客人开始讲话。所以各位可以反省一下今天各位的脾气。<笑>不过还好，今天我们不用做业务，没有关系。好，那然后呢？学长提到这个，教师举循循善诱，教导林学长什么是业务，什么是市场行销，那是林学长的启蒙恩师。他为人正直，视野开拓，有西方人的国际观，兼具东方人的亲情家庭观。是你非常学习的这个 role model. So I'm talking about uh, David uh, regarding you as his role model. And uh, 下面更重要，我觉得这一段最精彩。林学长说，他上任以后学习的很快。这都林学长自己说的哈。他说，他然后学习的很快。他还说，开始开始间与客户建立良好的关系，结果非常出色。强调出色也是他自己写的。然后他说这个业绩突飞猛进，两年内可成为这个 T 呃这个怎么这可以 Tisco Tisco 好呃台湾总经理，也是 TI 在台第一个本土化总经理，而呃 Mr. s i c k 呃先生被提升为 TI 香港的 Managing Director， 负责香港和大大中华业务。那林学长呢，他自谦学友未带。请他继续指导，常常通过国际电话或是相约在旅途的航班上。那请呃，这样指导他非常多在业务上的这个工作。好，所以我们就接下来 ，So now， 呃、uh, ，Please welcome our first guest。Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Wen. Congratulations, Dr. David Lin. <laughs> David, it's, a, it's honestly an honor to ask you to say a few words today. Thank you very much. Uh, let me try to put into perspective uh, what all happened. Uh, in 1978, uh, Morris Chang wanted to expand TI's businesses in Asia. Um, at that time, Taiwan was only selling semiconductor products, and the revenue in Taiwan was a total of $1 million per year, <laughs> less than $100,000 a month. And the idea that uh, Morris had was let's, let's have all TI product groups represented by a new organization. And I was put in charge of Taiwan and Korea. Taiwan was very small, Korea was zero. And it started by hiring people. So I was adding people, and they were training on the various TI product lines, expanding the semiconductor sales, and my goal I was supposed to be here for five years, and my goal was to get a local person to replace me. Well, three years into it, I don't have a good candidate, so I contacted the TI Taiwan uh, manager over there, and I interviewed David. And in David, what I saw 
was, and he was one of the earlier employees of TI in Taiwan. So he was an engineering manager uh, at, the, uh, at the facility. What I saw in David, obviously he was a good engineer. He went to a decent school, right? Yeah. <laughs> he was really dedicated in his job and did a thorough job in what he was doing. He was good with people and a very good team leader, and he worked with the other teams very well. And most importantly, he had good ethics, which in TI is extremely important. He had some things missing. He didn't have marketing skills. He didn't have sales skills. He didn't know how to develop business strategies. And he didn't have professional attire. That's why I was dressed for success. <laughs> and wow, he read it. And he, he is uh, very good. He, he does it right now. So this was mid-1981, uh, where I have David. And at that point, I'm expecting another two years to get him up to speed. But just, just as you think you've got the plan all worked out, guess what? There's a change. I'm told, John, you're moving to Hong Kong. You're going to have Hong Kong and the People's Republic of China. David is all set, right? Well, we'll get him there. So as a result, I was coming back for the next three to four months, once or twice a month, to the, to the Taiwan, Tisco Taiwan office, and we'd hold a whole day session. Um, the first things that he had to do was, in the first sessions, we were doing uh, some pricing strategies, how to determine the right price, what's the sales strategy on pricing, negotiating strategies, and things of that nature. Um, <coughs> Then we had to, after those first few months, uh, in getting him on board with a lot of the sales and marketing training, we then went on to uh, a second step where we traveled together on the airplanes, as Dr. Wenitz has stated. And he'd come with real life problems that he had, and I would then talk over with him as to the approach on how to solve it, and the process on how to solve it. And if he disagreed and said that it had to be another way, we'd talk about it further. And uh, a lot of times we got to a better solution than mine, David. So thank you for that. Uh, David was a very thirsty man for knowledge. And if any of you have ever tried to do education, it's great to have a student that is like a sponge, where the information goes in and it is held. And that was what David was like. And then in addition to that, I found David to be very creative and extremely hardworking, and Susan would agree to that. <laughs> um, David's successes at TI have to be mentioned. He took TI, not just TI here in Taiwan, but he took TI to a new level, um, where he worked on PC chipsets, where he worked on the TI Acer joint venture, uh, and just much, much more. So he was going beyond the borders here. Then he went to Lighton, and he did very well. He became president and CEO of Diodes. He became president and CEO of Lighton Technology, and probably a lot more that I'm not even aware of. But uh, outstanding successes. David had a fantastic career. And there was one little theme song that we used to have in the Taiwan office when we achieved a million dollars per month, not per year. We had a little theme song of, it's hard to be humble. And whenever we got to a new milestone, we would talk about, it's hard to be humble. <laughs> I, would, I would like to read to you just the opening verse of hard to be humble, this won't take long. Unfortunately, I am not going to sing it. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh Lord. oh, Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. I can't wait to look in the mirror because I get better looking each day. <laughs> I, to know me is to love me. I must be a hell of a man. Oh, Lord, it's hard to be humble, but I'm trying the best I can. <laughs> so that was the song that we did uh, quite often and joking with each other. So 
So in closing, I'd like to congratulate Dr. David, but I would also like to congratulate his partner, Susan. Would you please stand up and take a bow? Because this is a lot of your work also. Congratulations also to you.
hundred periods right. <laughs> no fishing periods. Hundred per hundred periods. And uh, also uh, considering the meanings of hundred periods. That is the equivalent to uh, more than hundred fishing periods or period periods. Because the current people is a point to seven times against the our age. So we are just 50 years old. <laughs> <laughs> so we should stay another 50 years. But uh, could not stay, could not stay current basis. Because we are running over 100, 100 meters with the 8 or 9 seconds. So we should, we should slow down. Otherwise, uh, we cannot survive another 50 years. <laughs>